we're going to write a piece of code to add up all the numbers from one to hundred. So what will that code look like? If you don't want to look at my code. So why don't we, why don't you guys uh, right here or somewhere here, just write this code or delete my code or write it next to or copy it, whatever you want to do. I painfully went and deleted all the other code. So you don't have, you have only one chance to copy. <laughs> just to warm up. <laughs> So, okay, before you start typing, let's, let's have a quick discussion. So how do we write this function? What are we going to do? What kind of programming structure uh, will we use? You want to use a for loop, a while loop, recursive, what, how do you want to write this? I'm, I'm more like for loop, for okay. loop. Uh... Okay. Good, good, good. So now let's, okay. So, so, okay. Anyone else wants to go for loop? For loop means you cannot copy, but that's good. <laughs> Who else wants to go? Kiran loves for loop. She does everything with for loop. So Kiran's already smiling. She's like, I see a for loop. Cassandra? I was going to say, yeah, while. <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra's like, while is already written. I might as well use yeah. it. <laughs> okay. That's how will we do it with the for loop? What's the idea? So I can go. Uh, yeah, yeah. The take for loop, yeah. So the, the meaning of for loop is I start with zero and max number what I can go with is what is my limited. So I start with a equals to zero or whatever the a for uh, assuming this function is getting from need to do sum from two to 10, for instance. So I will say for i equals to a. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As long as i is less than or equal to b, which is in this case is a. Uh, or 10, then I will keep incrementing my i, and then the uh, within my for loop, I will just doing the multiple uh, addition of. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, yeah. okay, so what? So okay, that's correct. Everything you said is correct structurally, except Python makes little bit confusion. So how do I specify a Python for loop? Right, you have to say for. So you want an index that you were talking about, right? i equals whatever. So for i in range. So if you if you're not remembering the Python syntax, I will just write it for you. For i in range something, do all the actions, right? Whatever you want to do. So what is the range? Does it start at some value and then increment? So if it's I, a, it's a b one. The range is a b one. A b one. What is one? So increment. Ah, increment. You can default it. It will go by one. But it's important. Remember, it has to be b plus one though. Yeah, b plus one, right? Okay. Yeah. So because so. Uh, Ashish, just a recap for you. Range will give you a set of numbers. It will start with A. It will automatically increment by one. If you want to increment by some other value, you should put comma here and put whatever. If you want to increment by two. Okay. So we will just default it. So it's just one. It starts from A and we want it to go all the way to B. But in Python, if you say B, range will stop at B, B minus one. Right. So we have to put B plus one here. Okay, so we got we got some loop going. The loop has the correct boundaries. Okay, now what do we have to do inside this loop? So the first value of i is actually a. So basically, this thing will take a and put it into i. Then it will so put a plus John, one. I, I think uh, Cassandra, Kiran, or Ashish should be able to do it. Let's, let's yeah. <laughs> do it. Yes, you don't need to help here. No, but I had already started on my page, but I saw okay. VJ doing so. I thought I should rather. No, no. We'll no. give you. Let, let, let's let's give them two minutes. Like uh, no, okay. you have written this much. Like Ooh. let's see. Yeah. Cassandra will do using while loop, but not copy. <laughs> <laughs> and Kiran and Ashish and Vanshika, they're going to use, uh, they'll try using for loop. She's going to try not to look, but yes, yes. Cassandra, you did, don't copy, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a flashing red light if you copy uh -oh. above your head. <laughs> hey, uh, Vijay, did you say like uh, I in range? That means first number I'm going to get as a A. Uh, a in I, I will have an A, right? Yeah. And then we'll keep uh, yeah. right. Just wanted to make sure. Yes, yes. Done. Let us know in the chat if you're done. <laughs> it should not take longer than this. Oh, Vanshika is done. Okay, good. Vanshika. Vanshika, do you want to share your code? Can you share your code? 
Share, you know, share your code or, yeah, even easier maybe, just paste your code in chat. Yeah, yeah, just paste it's it. It's a function, yeah, just yeah. paste the function in chat. Yeah, it's very short. So I was like, I'm thinking. I, no, I, I well, no. I, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Yeah, 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 okay. Do, can I, we, we will do the while solution together, Cassandra. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. By the way, there's no problem in being stuck, okay? This is, this is the programmer's life, being stuck. I spend 80% of my time being stuck. Right, the only question is, can we get unstuck eventually? Okay, I see, we see, we see the solution from Anshika, so. Okay. So does everybody see Wanchika's solution? In fact, I can just copy it and paste it into my into my screen so we can all look at it. Some colors and everything. Wanchika, that looks good. So, but let's discuss it a little bit, okay? Yeah. Uh, we can ask um, Kiran, Cassandra, and Ashish to comment on this code. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what obvious some obvious issues with this problem the solution. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Monshika, were you able to run it or did you just write it in chat? Yeah. I think this is a special case where it's running because the, okay, I'll not comment right now, but I think, uh, let Cassandra, Kiran, do you see a problem with this code or Ashish? Okay. I yeah, I, I, I do plus see. Plus I rather than some plus A. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the, there's a colon missing as well. Oh, sorry. It's missing for my case as well. Yeah, so some plus, what do we want here? I. 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 Okay. Okay. And where should be the return? Oh, I, I made a mistake with oh. pasting. Okay. Yeah, the return should have been outside the function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one problem with Python code. Everything is indentation sensitive. So when we copy paste code, it breaks all the time. Okay. I think uh, Ashish pasted as well, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Again, for you also, the return careful of the indent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a, an unfortunate problem of pasting Python code from one place to another. Indents may break sometimes when we copy paste. Okay, so since you've done this, can all of you just do this now? So I will do here underscore while here for a minute, and then I will change it. Let's take off this for. I put a for here in my thing. So you have implemented some terms, yeah. Now I want to show you one thing here. Since you guys may be a little overwhelmed with your testing stuff, just go and put in a triple quote. That makes a string. You see the top three tests, you put in a triple quote there and close the triple quote just at the end. That will shut off all my tests. They'll just become a comment. Okay, so there will be less noise. These are all tricks we can use to manage the noise. Yeah, so just comment out. Everybody should comment out this. And now can you run your test? Let's see what happens. So you can, uh, those who didn't write the code can just copy the code from chat and then write this way, yeah? Anyone was able to run the test? You have to shut off my function by the way, right? My function has the same name, change off, change off the name on that function. Okay, so how is it going for uh, everybody who was able to run the test? Not yet? I mean, take your time. We are going slow in this session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think I ran it, but I got confused. It's all, it's already there, right? Since we're using the same name. Yeah, just, just you mean the, 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 the test code? Mm -hmm. There's a third test here, right here. Do you see this test? Yes. Yeah, so why don't we also look at this? What should be the test? I did a test, okay? Because, by the way, I have tested this type of function a million times. So I know what the, I, have I kind of memorized what the sum of numbers from one to 100 is. But what is the sum of numbers from one to 100? 
50-50. Yeah, why is it 50-50? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to tell me why it's 50 50? Kiran, it's not a for loop, but still. Why is the sum of numbers from what is the answer? What is this? We are right, trying to write a test. Okay, let's re let me rephrase the question. We're trying to write a test to test the function we're writing. Yes? So, one way to do it. Tested it on one and three. So one, okay. two, three, that's A is equal to one and B is equal to three. So, oh, okay. so that I could validate the answer at the same yeah, time. That's, okay, so that's a, hmm. we can make that into a philosophy, right? The philosophy says always test with small numbers so I don't have to break my head to figure out what the answer is, okay? Uh, but of course, that's not, we're not done. Always testing with small numbers doesn't help us because sometimes that can be too easy and so on, okay? Okay, so one, two, three. So what is the sum of numbers from one to three? Six. Okay, so everyone will put another test in here. Just give it a new name, okay? Some terms, let's call this like this and let's put another name here, one or something, okay? Later you can put some some de descriptive names for these functions so you understand what was being done. Or you can put a comment here so you understand what's being done. Okay, so can we run this test now? So we have four tests here. I ran four tests and they passed. Two of them are from the SQR. If you don't want them, you can comment them out too. But first, let me pause. Are you guys comfortable with this test writing scheme? Yes. Everyone, Ashish, Cassandra. Yeah. It's okay, easy. Okay. Is it is it painful or is it fun at this point? Painful. <laughs> painful. Okay. <laughs> Honesty is a good policy. Yes. What's painful, Cassandra? Um, I guess keeping track of the names of the functions and and just. Uh, okay. Let's try to simplify. Yeah, let's try to simplify this, right? The simplification is the names don't matter, right? Which function are you talking about? The sum terms function or the testing functions? Oh, the, the testing function. Yeah, the testing functions names don't matter. You and you're going to create whatever name you want. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that's required is it starts with the test underscore. That's all. Right? And that you have one or two tests. So we know. And the nice thing is once the test is written, each time I change my code, if I do something, I can just hit the test button and it tells me if everything's okay. Right, so for example, I saved, I think I saved all of you from a bug by saying you have to put B plus one here, right? Suppose we didn't put B plus one, we had just put A to B and then you run this test, it's gonna break, right? And you tell me, see there are two failures. Right, so it's, it's constantly helping me to get my code right. Right, so that is kind of a nice, uh, once you get used to it, you're gonna to try to like this, right? You're gonna be like, oh, that's cool. I can keep tinkering with my code and now I test it and it's all good. So it'll become part of our routine, okay? But anyway, let me take you back to the testing thing and ask this question. Let's just spend a minute thinking about this function quickly, okay? I want to know the sum of numbers from one to 100. How will I do it? Of course, my program, if it's written correctly, will calculate, but how will I do it? So this is our prob problem solving uh, hat. Anyone? Any ideas? Okay, so I always tell this story in this context, okay, because it's a very powerful mathematician who actually did this first. And the claim is that he was sitting in a classroom where the teacher, the children always make noise and the teacher would always give them math problems. So to keep them quiet, he will tell, okay, right, add up all the numbers from one to hundred. And the kids will be busy for, I don't know, half an hour adding up all the numbers, right? So there was one kid who put a spend down immediately in two seconds or whatever, one minute after the teacher asked the question. So the teacher said, I'm going to punish you. Why are you not doing your sums? He said, I finished it. And the teacher said, how did you finish? You have to add hundred numbers. How did you finish? He said, it's very easy. I took the numbers from one to hundred and I wrote them this way. Then I reverse them. Okay, so can you do it in your head? One to 100 goes like this, then you reverse them. What's the addition of the first two terms? So it's 199, the first two terms. So one to 100, the first term is 100 plus one, right? I'm reversing. Okay, watch my screen here. Can, can all of you see this? So this is one, two, three, like this, right? It goes up to 100, right? 
Now I reverse it. So I start with 100 here and then 99. You put them one below, one above. You see what I'm doing, right? 98 like this. So how many terms are here? They are same number of terms. If I add the first term, what do I get? 101. If I add the second term, what do I get? 101. Third term? 101. Okay, how many terms are there? 100. 100. Okay, so 100 times 101. Is it the answer or is it two times the yeah. answer? 50. It's 50 times. 50, 50 columns. Why 50? 50? I did from 1 to 100, yeah? Because you're adding it twice now. Ah, so I'll, divide by two later. I'll divide by 2 later. But if I don't divide anything, wow. there are 100 terms, 100 times 101, which is easy to do. And then divide by 2, that's my answer. That's 50, 50. Okay. Now, what is more powerful is that you can do this for any n. You put this with n. And here you do n, n minus 1 and n minus 2, right? You do this way. You get a formula. Do you know this formula? You add up all these terms. What do they add up to? Each term adds up to what? n plus 1 is n what? Plus one. Yeah, there's n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1. There are n times, right? So if you do this thing, you'll get n into n plus 1, yeah? yeah. By 2. And then I have to divide by 2 to get the answer. That's it. So does anybody remember now this formula? Somebody memorized it. Yes? But you see what I'm showing you is that the mathematics is... If we think right, it's easy. It's not a formula to be memorized. Right? We can add up. And now see how powerful this is. It's much more powerful than my for loop, yeah? So sometimes the mathematicians are more powerful than us because they write one formula like this. So actually, if you want to be super clever, you could take this formula. This is homework exercise for you. You can write another function. Instead of doing all this for loop stuff, you could just plug the function in here and calculate the sum of terms from A to B. Okay, but you have to do a little massaging with A and B. But I, I don't I don't need you to do it right now. Okay. Are we comfortable summing terms? Easy. We understand we understand how to write a program, we understand how the mathematicians get very clever. So I have to ask you guys this question. If you had to pick your superpower, do you want to be the programmer or the mathematician right now? You want to be the person writing the for loop or the person who found the formula? Mathematicians. <laughs> it's funny, right? Sometimes mathematicians are cool. Uh, usually the world doesn't see it. But when they, when they show us something like this, you're like, cool, I want to do that too. Okay. But we'll, you'll see this continuously, right? The math, math is fun and easy for us. Okay. So let's go back here. Now I'm going to ask you a different question. Okay. We, I promised Cassandra to do the while loop too. Okay. So let's just do the while loop quickly. So the idea with the while loop is the same, right? I need a condition. As long as this condition is is not met, the while loop is going to run. And the condition here is that A must be less than B. I'm just starting with some A and A must be less than B. Okay. And I will continuously increase the current value of A. So inside the loop, I will increase the value of A by one. So then my loop is done. Each time I start with A, then I go to A plus one, A plus two, A plus three, A plus four. That's my loop. Hey, John, why yeah. is it term plus A? So I think there's some... Uh... It's Where? plus one in this code. Oh, yeah, yeah, it should be one. Term plus equal to one. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. One sec. I okay. So good question. Sorry. <laughs> Stay with me. So when this loop runs, the current value of a is my starting value. Right. First time. Right. So let's say I start from one. One to hundred. I'm adding. Right. So my starting value is one. So I will add one to my sum. Now I will increase A will become 2. So yeah. I will add 2 to my sum. Now I will increase. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I will add 3 to my sum. Okay, because yes. And here's where I'm increasing A. By the way, you can write this as plus equals. Okay, remember we wrote sum plus I here. You can write sum yeah. just to share with you guys. You can write this way also. It's a compact way of writing this. I don't know if it helps you or not. But it's a compact way of writing sum, sum equals sum plus I. It's a shorthand way of writing. So it's up to you if you like this or you like this. When I started programming, I, I preferred not to use this. It was a little confusing for me. So I always used to write like this, right? 
Okay, it's up to you whichever one you want. So is the while loop now clear? So the while and for loops are equivalent, right? Whenever you write one, the point, as I stressed in our previous course, is we use while loops when using while loop when this condition is hard to figure out, is indeterminate. Then while loops are more powerful. When it's determinate, they are completely equivalent. You can write either for loop or while loop, whichever you like. Clearly, we have two for loop fans here. Maybe maybe everyone. Wanshika, are you a for loop fan too, or you like while sometimes? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to later, I'm going to introduce you to a programming technique called recursion. And we can write this using recursion as well. We'll come back and write it later. Okay, but now I have an interesting question for you. I finished, I finished the sum of numbers. Now I want to do the sum of the square of the numbers. So I want to calculate one squared plus two squared plus three squared up to hundred squared. So can you write this function now? Before you start writing, always I want you guys to give me some strategy. How will you write it? We get used to uh, discussing before, like say, like a design session, right? And then we start typing. So what is the idea? Maybe start with the function we wrote for the four. Yeah. And then we change it so that inside. Wonderful. That's the, that's the first place to go. Try to reuse whatever we can, right? Okay. So some copy pasting and changing is the idea, right? The strategy, it's not, it's a good strategy. Yes. If you can do copy paste and change, <laughs> always good. Okay. So can everybody copy paste and change? And then tell me when you're done. Done or not? Some small nods are coming. Yes. Kiran is looking very carefully. Did you finish copy pasting or no? No. Yeah, Ashish says done. Okay. So Ashish, you want to just paste your code. You want to paste, one of you can paste your code. Uh, and then I'm going to copy paste and you guys can tell me what you're doing. Okay. So by the way, sorry, I have just, you can look at my screen for a second. I have this thing that I, you can also write this recursively. So that's why I put recursive sum terms or whatever that you ignore that, right? Some square terms is what we're looking at right now. Yeah. So I copy paste it. Now, what am I changing? I, I had something. I don't I don't know if it's right. Yeah. But I had I had changed it to um sum equals sum plus i to to the second power. Yeah, which star. is star, star star two, yeah? Yeah. Everybody did yeah. something like this? There's only one thing to change, yeah? Yes or no? Yes. So there's only one little thing to change that instead of summing i, I'm summing squares of i, right? That should give me this. Okay, now how will I test? So let's go to the testing side quickly. How will I test this? I wrote some I wrote some tests, but you can make a test. So let's do this. Make yeah, I have a test here. You can uncomment my test or you can create your own test. So just copy that. So you'll see why I left some tests here. If you want to use my test, you can, or you can write your own test. So what, uh, what's the, how will we write this test? Kiran had a strategy, use small numbers or something, right? <laughs> so we'll use that strategy. So one to three, for example, what is it? Squares of numbers from one to three, if I add them, what will I get? One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, so? 14. 14, right? So you, So we wrote a test here. So let's test it and see. Yeah, it seems happy. So did all of you write the test as well? Okay, now I'm gonna ask an interesting question. I'm not gonna solve it for you today. What if I want to do some, is there a mathematical formula for squares? It happens to be yes. If you are interested, remind me 
next time and we'll talk about this formula but i'm going to keep pushing forward okay so now immediately i'm going to come back to you and say okay can you do cubes now yeah yeah what will you do i to the power 3 okay so implement there's a function here and a test to pass let's make it now you should go faster and faster right but uh, in a moment i'm going to stop you but okay for now we can do this i will just do it i won't even it's so 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 obvious okay what do we need to do here change i star star 3 <laughs> yeah i star star 3 Okay, so as soon as we do this, what is okay? You can finish the test and everything. That's like a little bit homework for you, okay? But what is the the moral of the story? Is look, that's not smelling right. If I want to keep changing, then and every time I'm copying and changing like one small thing, and now I have hundred functions all copied, and if I break somewhere, everything is broken, right? So this a very interesting story here. copying and changing something is a good idea once or twice right if you do more than twice actually there's a there's a there's a there's a programmer's rule it's called dry principle do not repeat yourself if you find yourself repeating yourself you need to stop and say how can i stop repeating okay by the way when i first started programming there was a i was pay, uh, working with a guy who was a little bit more advanced than me at that time he was absolutely adamant on it right in the middle of the day 11 o'clock 10 o'clock if you're if you're writing code with him or discussing with him if anything gets repeated he will stop the discussion and say no we not we should not repeat it even one line he will not allow me to repeat it i'm like come on man we'll just copy it and we'll solve the problem no you have to figure out how not to repeat it okay so it depends how religious you want to be about this i think i'm a little more flexible says okay maybe one or two times you can make a mistake a sin a sin a, a not so cool thing but quickly we must recover and say okay how do we fix this okay so the idea here is there are two there are two operations that we are doing the operation of iterating through a range of numbers and computing the sum that is one operation right and the second operation is the sum of what in one case it's i squared in one case it's i cubed and what's changing between these three functions is that i squared i cubed is being changed right and it could be some other function right now i did powers but what if i tell you to add the sign sign of 1 plus sign of 2 plus sign of 3 then what will you do you'll copy this and replace i cubed with sign of 1 sign of i right so basically if you want to go to any series and do some operation to each term on the series there seems to be a common pattern here right so if you can take that that pattern out we could be in a wonderful place so now i'm going to show you this so there's a new thing it's called sum series and what it has is it has a third argument here and the third argument is actually a function we pass in a function and we apply the function so who wants to be the brave person to say i can easily implement this function can you see it Can you see how to write? We should, we should know the function before. Uh, no. I mean, whether it's a square or a cube. No. No. So this is a little bit abstract. So I'm going to write this. Okay. So I'm saying it's really cool, right? This is very cool because I can just copy your for loop solution and paste it here. And what I'm going to do is just one small change. Instead of writing sum plus i cube, here I'm going to write apply the function to i. Do you see it? Okay, but what does this do? This has become supremely powerful now. I can sum any series, but how will I call this function? So, can somebody tell me how will I test this function? Sum series. So we'll go to H O F test. I have already written some sum series, but I can show you here. Okay. So let's test it with a square. Or actually, yeah, let's test it with the square. So you see that I've already written this function called h of square. So that I have to pass in a function here, right? So I pass in the function h of square. Where is h of square? I've written a function called square. You can see up here, there's a function called square. We looked at this earlier, right? So I'm going to pass in this function, and each time it comes to a new term in the series, it's going to use this function to calculate n squared. 
or i squared or whatever right so now let's look at our test so we passed in a square function and i did the numbers from 1 to 100 but how about we do the numbers from 1 to 3 and what's the answer again 14 right i got a new test is it going to work so let's test it six tests failures one what happened third did i type 30 somewhere vj is the the answer 14 might be wrong yeah the answer 14 i put 1 1 to 4 right 1 to 3 Okay. So, can you now do cubes? Okay. Now, trick question: How will you go back and just do the ordinary addition? What function will you pass? It's a trick question. Can do square to the one still square. No, no, no. I want to add the numbers now. So I want to use. Okay, so let me show you in the code page. I want to use this function, right, which we just wrote, sum of series. This function, I want to use this, but I just want to add, just do a one plus two plus three plus four. So what should f be in that case? F of i should be i. Yeah. So it's just a simple function. It's called the identity function. It takes in a value i and returns i. That actually, the simple case is confusing for us because it doesn't do anything. It takes an i and returns an i. So I've written here. You can see at the top here. I call it the identity. Right? It takes n and returns n. Okay. So you have something nice to play with here, that you can sum any series now. Right? We become very powerful. I don't know. Those of you who have done math courses, there are all kinds of. We spend weeks and months doing summation of series. Right, um, and there are all kinds of, huh? Sorry, Ashish. Can I can yeah. I just ask a question? Like, yes, I I got your point of identity function, which is like you're sending. Uh, if you send i, it's gonna return to you i. Yeah, But is is like uh, I'm just trying to understand why. Yeah, how does it help us in this particular scenario, or no, how this identity function will help in help in future? No, no, no. The idea is not to how the identity will help, but the idea is that we only have now that we are so advanced, we only have this function in our library. We go back and we delete all the other for loops and everything, clean up everything. Yes. Got it. Now, if I have only this function and I want to do the simple case, I don't want to write another function just to do one plus two plus three. Yeah. Got it. So then you have to use a trick to create the identity function so we can do that as well. So I'm making a very bold statement to you right now. Once we have written this function, we become super powered. Anybody has a series, I can sum it for you, <laughs> from any start value to any end value, any function that you want, x squared, x cubed, sine, cosine. So those who have done Fourier series, anything you do in mathematics which involves a sum, we have. We don't need a formula. We can just calculate how many terms you want. A million terms, I can do a million terms. I'll show you in a minute how I can use this. Okay. Why are these sums and series inter? There's inf many many uses for this, but but let me give you one more trick here. Now I summed all the increase by one, right? One plus two plus three. Suppose I want to add only the even numbers between one and hundred. What are we going to do? One plus two plus four. You you would have to take the number whichever comes in divided by two if the remainder is zero. Then no, it won't be divided by two <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just okay. Uh, uh, why won't be divided by two? Because you won't have a remainder zero, right? Well, not the remainder question. Uh, but... Sorry, go ahead. No, I think what Ashish is saying that he will continue to check if the remainder is zero. Uh, then we will use that index. And no, then no, I, wait, wait, okay. So let me understand. What are we checking? Are we checking on the index, or are we just adding the total and just dividing the total by two? Uh, uh, what, what I was trying to do is that the, uh, the first we won't need to know which is the uh, even or odd number, right? Uh -huh. so if you have an index based on you know this is the even number, then only you go for the next part to. Okay. Okay. Addition on that side. Okay. So you do even number, you do odd number, but now if I say I want to take, you know, 
the first number, the third number, the tenth number. I want, I have some other sequence, right? I want all kinds of jumping around. But it's still a series. Just the jumps are very kind of. He does jumping. So Vijay, huh. so Vijay you, could, you could go with that, that increment i. Yeah, so that's the idea, right? You make another function for this. Right? This function's job is if you give me the current value, it will tell me how to get the next value. Okay? But I'm just showing you this idea. But, but let me pause now. You can digest this slowly. But we have already entered into a different world now. This is the world of higher order functions. Why is it a higher order function world? We leave the increment for a minute. Let's go back to series. It's higher order world because we are passing functions to function. Right? As soon as you can pass a function to another function, we become much more flexible. We can write a function to encode certain patterns. And then we can pass another function and say, can you please run this, this, my function inside this new pattern that you have. Right? So it becomes very, very powerful when we do this. It makes sense. So these are called higher order functions. When we pass one function to another function. Now this is done in a mildly mathematical context, but let me give you a quick example. Suppose I have a list. We'll do this next time. Maybe we have a list of I items. They're all strings. Okay. And somebody has written a function to sort the strings. And he's doing alphabetical sort. Okay. Now I want to change this alphabetical sort and replace it. I want to sort the strings by the length of the strings. Right. Question to you. Does the sorting algorithm depend on what is the criteria I use to sort? You think? So for example, if I, if I sort ascending or descending, does the order ascending, descending, does it change the algorithm or it's just a, a choice of something. So there are two things here. Yeah. One is the sort order and then the length function. Yes. So the idea is the criteria. So I, let's, let's think about a simple sorting. So we'll talk about sorting in detail in the later sessions, but the simple idea of sorting is like bubble sort, right? You take two elements, you compare them. If one is greater or less than, then you swap them. You keep doing this and so on. So the idea is that the function that you use to compare those two elements, could be anything, right? By default, we use greater than less than for numbers. For strings, you can use alphabetical who is greater than, who is alpha less than, or, but you could replace it with length, right? So the idea is that that compare function can be pulled out of the sorting algorithm. And then I can tell, you can write the sorting algorithm and say, you give me the choice, what function you want to use to compare. The only thing the compare function has to do is give it two elements, it tells is greater or less than. Or two or right? Then my sorting function can use this compare function to do sorting based on whatever comparison you want. I just gave this, we'll, we'll write this code, okay? Not today, but we'll write this code. But you see what I'm saying, as soon as we get higher order functions, we get a tremendous amount of flexibility. If you don't make a higher order function, you live in a world where you copy paste and copy paste and copy paste. Sort ascending is one function, sort descending is one function, sort by length is another function. It just your code will become very, very unwieldy. Yeah, just like we saw here. So I don't want you to get the wrong idea that this higher order function utility is only for mathematics. The utility is for arbitrary world programming problems, data science problems where we see patterns. We notice that we are repeating this pattern in different problem spaces. We notice that the changes can be encapsulated inside a particular function. We pull that function out into the parameters of the pattern function. And then we pass in whatever we want. Okay, this is a very, very, very extremely powerful idea. So I don't necessarily want all of you to, to see every possibility right now. But this whole exercise was designed to give you some chance to practice this. Okay. And I know we are a little short on time. So I just want to give you the last piece, last ingredient here. The last ingredient here is, uh, let me see. The last ingredient here is very cool to show you how can I use this practically. So there's this incredibly beautiful number pi. Okay. And the question is, what is the value for pi? Okay. And the answer is, and if, if you can actually, let me see. If you can go go to the course webpage on the on the last section, uh, I'll let it open. On the last section, I've given you 
uh, by last section, I mean here in higher order functions in this section here, the last example I've given you is well, as soon as it comes up. I'll so the last example I've given you is how to compute pi. Uh, let me see. Here. Can you guys see this? Everyone can see this? Yes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this is the last example I've given you. There's a beautiful formula here. It's not the best formula for computing pi, by the way. Okay, and this formula is called the Leibniz formula. And Leibniz worked, Leibniz was also a philosopher. Came up with a theory of monads and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, Cassandra will talk about monads next time or Leibniz next time. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, but Leibniz also was a mathematician and he came up with this beautiful formula. Basically, I will explain the formula in a second, but before I explain the formula, I'll make a comment. It's actually something not well known in the Western world, but there was an old school of mathematicians in Kerala who actually worked on this kind of stuff that Leibniz worked on. By the way, Leibniz also was one of the contributors and founders and creators of calculus along with Newton. Um, but there were mathematicians in Kerala and India who, who discovered a little bit of calculus and some of this mathematics in the 14th century. This work was done in Europe in the 16th century. Right. And we are now finding, in fact, they used to write on like coconut leaves. They didn't have paper in those days or whatever. So there's some old manuscript, palm leaf manuscripts on which they have found all these kind of formulas and so on. I say this only to inspire you guys to think about the 14th century and think about these people who were actually asking challenging questions, right? That we can easily ask today. We have books and paper and computers and everything. We just need the interest and the excitement to explore all this, right? Uh, but anyway, so, so I, and, and we can ask why is this formula true and so on. That would be a math class. But now I can ask all of you, can you use our newly acquired skills to sum the terms in the series? So let me explain what does this series look like? The first term in the series is when n is equal to zero. Okay. And it's minus one to the power of zero. So that's one. So the first term is one. Okay. The second term in the series is minus one over n is equal to one here. So y is one over three. The next term is, I'll just tell you all the terms now, minus one over three plus one over five minus one over seven. So it's all the odd numbers, but with an alternating minus sign. Make sense? I'm, I'm sorry. I have a question about yeah. um, this page showing up. I don't know if it's just me, but I was trying to get to it on my own. Yeah course and it, when I'm on 1.23 yeah and I click next it jumps to 1.3 okay so let me just check did I not publish it or something let me see thank you for pointing it out Cassandra um, so while my page comes up uh, so what I want you to understand that I've given you a little bit of instruction in uh, in each of these sections that you can read some text and implement the code. Okay. There are so many buttons I have to click to get all these things to work. It's unbelievable. I might have missed out one button. Let me see. Welcome to my life. Yeah, it seems okay. Oh, do other people, what? are other people able, able to see it? Uh, yeah. Just hit, re you know what, Cassandra, just hit reload on the whole page. Maybe is okay. everyone able to see this or not? Can 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 you see this uh, this 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 sections here? Kiran? I saw it before. I saw it before the session started, John. But now it's not there. No, no, no. I I I I'm I'm yet not on that page. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm trying the same. Trying yeah, to yeah. It's a little bit slow. Just let's do that, and we can wind up immediately after. But I just want you to see this, and I'll walk you through this uh, briefly. Is it still slow? Just loading? Mine is still not showing. And you hit reload, uh, Cassandra? Mm -hmm. I am totally puzzled. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so let me. So, okay, that we can. I can open. I can see that page, as it estimating is, the value of pi using a series approximation, and I can see the formula. Is that what we are looking for? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're looking for. So why? Same, can, same with me. I can see that. Too. Cassandra, you you're not able to. Are you able to reload? Um. Yes, I I did. Is it hiding in the corner somewhere? Well, what, maybe I should restart from the course page. And then yeah, maybe just try it. Yeah, that might force it. If I go to one point two. Yeah. Um. One point one, you mean? One point one. Oh, one point one. Yeah. One point one. Sorry. Ah, Manchika says she can't see it too. Okay, so where are you going? Uh. Okay, how can we help you? So you okay? Oh, we'll I I found it. Yes, I don't what know. Happened? I so, guess it's inside one point one. Yes, it's one point okay. one. One point one. For some reason, I yeah, I was looking at it. I was looking for it in one point two. Oh, ah, one point two is a different topic we didn't cover okay. today. Okay. So yeah, one point one. One chica okay. as well. Try one point one. Okay. So what is the what is the uh, thing I want to show you first of all is each of these sections. Whatever we discussed today, right? Write a function from a is one to hundred, sum of squares. Whatever we discussed, I have written in English here, right? So after the course is over, if you want to go and review, you can just do this and practice one more time. Yeah. But at the end comes this extra. This is extra credit, right? For you to try to figure out now. I won't solve it because time is low. We will do this offline, right? And next time we will review it. You can do it as a assignment. So basically, I'm saying if you click on this, so let me open link here. You can see it this way. Maybe it's better, easier for you to understand if I show you this way. That summation that I've written is equivalent. I'll wait for this summation is equivalent to a very simple looking thing, right? If you look at it, can you see this here on top? That's what it is. That's what that summation represents, right? One minus one third. So its denominator is all odd numbers. And the numerator is alternating plus minus one. Okay, and what Leibniz and Madhvacharya found out is that if you add up all these terms, you get closer and closer to pi by four. Okay, so in particular, this gives you an estimate for pi. If you don't know how to calculate pi, you can just calculate this series. Why did I keep this example to show you? Look, we can we can we can solve some very tricky problems using our little piece of code. Yeah. You need to be in some advanced engineering course to understand Leibniz formula and all that stuff. But we can actually start estimating pi with our simple code. It literally, it needs one, a couple of lines of code. That's all. But it's a it's a powerful test to make sure that you understood what we are discussing. Make sense? So, will you guys uh, go back to the labs and there is a little option for you to implement uh, implement this. I've given some clues in there. If you read, you can copy my my work, or you can try to read the problem and solve it. It doesn't matter. Okay. So finish finish implementing this. So the idea is this. Uh, maybe for this week, because I have a little bit more to cover, I'll give you extra time to finish off. So the other piece that I want you to do is to show you how to use recursion. But I will defer the re recursion discussion to next week. Okay. So we will do recursion next week, and then this lab will be over when we finish recursion. Okay. In the meantime, you can finish all of this. So all of the questions for this lab are in that section I showed you, right? In here, just go through here and make sure you've implemented implemented all of these things in your file. Make sense? I've actually told you what function you see here. I said write a function called sum of series. Write a function called blah blah blah. I've given you in, I've given you instructions. If the instructions are not clear, just put it on the discussion board or that's probably a good place to go because you can help each other. Okay, so I would love to see next time when we get together that you've all implemented at least all of these sections, right? And written tests for all of them, and you're comfortable with it. So I'm going to pause. That, that's what I wanted to cover for this time. Let me pause and get some questions. How are you guys feeling? Too much? Too little? Too easy? Too hard? Tell me something. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, oh, wonderful. 
Is lab replacement of trinkets? Yeah. Yeah, so you can just write everything here. And when you're finished, so the idea is this, right? When you're finished with your code, if you hit submit, you will automatically get graded. You'll get the points here. But to see the points, if you hit submit, you have to hit reload. So for now, don't even worry. I also want to uh, test this submission one more time on my side. Okay, so I will send you an email later saying you can go ahead and submit. Maybe tonight or tomorrow, I will let you know about submitting your code. For now, just use this to run your code. Make sure you pass all the tests. Okay, right? Make sure you complete all these tests. Write your own tests to check your code. Okay, and then we once you're done, huh? Oh, sorry, we don't have a, a quiz. This is this is this the, is the it. Homework. Yeah, this yeah. Is this the, is your homework, okay. Right? So, like I said, there's, there's less I want to test as much as I want you guys to be comfortable in this environment, understand how to write tests, understand how to write these different functions, understand higher, higher order functions a little bit, think about it and think about testing a little bit, right? There's a lot of soft stuff for the first class, just getting familiar with the environment, etc. So do all that practice. So next time we sit down, you're easily able to write a test or create a new file or whatever, right?